Hi, I'm Nancy Freire, and this is Fantastic Furniture Painting. I'm so happy to be with you uh, by YouTube and uh, after you've seen this clip, hopefully on a Zoom call. Fantastic Furniture Painting is a little bit different than uh, regular class. Everybody works on a different piece. Everybody goes at their same pace, at, at a different pace, excuse me. Um, however, there are some basics that, whether you are a new painter or a very experienced painter, I'd like to cover in these series of videos. So, welcome, and let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about prepping your piece. Fantastic Furniture Painting is all about reclaiming an old piece of furniture or finishing an unfinished piece of furniture. The very first thing you're going to do is to prepare your piece Make sure it's structurally sound and coat it with a sealant called bin or kills. For that, you're going to use an old ratty brush. Uh, use something you can throw away. Uh, also, please try to use a water-based sealant, water-based kills or bin. When you're finished doing that, your piece should look like this. This is just a little box. I haven't finished coating this piece, as you'll note, the bottom is not done, the bottom of the lid is not done, and the bottom of the box is not done. You need to coat your entire piece so that it's sealed. Once you've put the kills or the bin on it, you want to give it a light sanding to make sure you have a smooth surface to paint on. Let's talk a little bit about the brushes that you'll use. Very easy, as I said, to you to, to paint your with your kills or your bin use a disposable brush. When you're painting your base colors on your piece, you might want a two inch or even a one inch or a two inch brush. But when you get to painting your designs, the brushes are pretty simple. I recommend a one, a three, and a five round brush. And if you're going to get involved in doing checks, uh, a straight edge brush or a chisel edge brush is your best bet. Okay, how about paint? In these days of, of COVID-19, paint supplies might be challenging. Um, Jerry's Artorama is a good place. Dick Blick is a good place. If your local hardware store is open and you're painting a large piece, what we paint with normally in class is acrylic interior paint. And I have a variety of, a variety of colors mixed for you in class. However, we're all home these days. So I would suggest that you invest in three primary colors. These are Liquitex paints, a blue, a red, and a yellow. From here, you can mix just about any color you need. And to lighten or darken, a black and a white. Okay. You want to keep your paint fairly liquid and sometimes as paint gets a little bit older, and even in using the Liquitex paints, they might be a little too thick to paint the designs you need on your piece. Something that's in every local hardware store you can get at Home Depot is called Floetrol. And what this does is thin out your paint without compromising the color. Use a few drops of it and keep mixing until your paint gets to the right thickness. The other kind of paint that you can make an investment in, and I'm saying make an investment because it's a little more expensive, is golden paint. And I have a set of golden paints that I like. Golden paint is priced according to the pigment in the, in the paint. Some of it's relatively expensive, so until you really get started and going with this and can't live without painting a piece, I wouldn't suggest you invest in golden paint yet. Uh, the other paint I just found, and I found this online, is called Arteza. It's an acrylic-based paint. It's a little bit thick, so I do use a little bit of Floetrol with it. I purchased a box of 20 paints for, I think, around $30. That's what the box looks like. Readily available online. Okay. Let's say you're ready to paint your piece, but you're not sure where it's going to go, and you don't have a color palette in mind, and you have no idea how you're going to start with this. 
each of you should invest in a color wheel. The color wheel I have, as you can see, is kind of battered and bruised. Color wheel will show you complementary colors. And it will also show you, on the other side of it, what color you will get if you mix colors together. So if you're using your primary colored paints, the Liquitex paints, reference your color wheel to get the desired paint color that you want. The only other kind of paint I haven't spoken to you about is craft paint, again, readily available uh, at, at any craft supply place online. The thing to remember about craft paint is the pigment in craft paint is not as intense. So you may end up painting a lot more coats of a color on a design than you really want to paint. So although I, I would say you can use the craft paint, it wouldn't be my first choice. So your piece is binned and you're getting ready to decide to color code the piece. What does this mean? This means putting a base coat of a color on every surface of your piece. Remember, you have an opportunity to change color every time you change surface or a plane on the piece. This is one of the very first pieces I did more than 30 years ago. Uh, I like to call it the chair that started it all. I was coming out of an art association up on the North Shore with this half-finished piece in my hands because we couldn't store our pieces in the studio, and a woman tried to buy it from me. Uh, subsequently, I did start a business up on the North Shore with a couple of other wonderful women who used to paint with me. Okay, enough said about the chair. Let's talk about the surfaces and changing color with every surface. You can see that the back of the chair and the seat of the chair background are in yellow. The chair has a little bit of groove here, so I use that as an opportunity to change color to blue. This particular chair, which as you can see is an older chair, has a lot of wonderful wood working on it. So every place I had an opportunity to change the color, I did. The top of the spindle is a light blue, the little knob in the middle is dark blue, there's a dark green, and then a darker blue. When you're color coding a piece like this that has legs, what you want to remember is to keep your darker tones of paint on the bottom part of the leg or the, the foundation of the piece of furniture so that the color anchors the piece. If you have a lighter color and darker colors on the top, it's just not that pleasing to the eye, and as I say, it doesn't anchor the piece. You're going to find that you're going to need at least two coats of paint to color code your piece. And when you're doing this, I wouldn't worry too, too much about where one paint meets the next. You want to be as neat and clean as you can, but if you are not, there are a variety of techniques that we're going to talk about. One of the most common um, is called dots. That's going to make your transition from one color to another color, nice and clean and professional. The other thing to remember is this is a hand-painted piece. It doesn't need to look stenciled and it doesn't need to look perfect. You want it to look as though you painted it yourself. Once your entire piece is color-coded, then we're going to start thinking about design. The design we'll talk about in the next video and we'll also start to talk about techniques of how to make your transition from one color of paint to another color look clean and professional. I mentioned a little earlier a technique called dotting, and we'll definitely talk about that in the next, in the next video. Um, my plan for the series of videos is to cover all these basics, and then during our Zoom call, as I'm sure we'll have a mix of experienced painters and inexperienced painters, We'll talk individually about your pieces and share ideas. Um, I want to show you where I get some of my ideas uh, and some of my color palettes. I guarantee you, once you start doing this, you will never look at the world the same way. I see colors and patterns and 
potential subjects for painting all around me now. It's, it's just an amazing thing. Remember, if you can hold a paintbrush, you can paint a piece of fantastic furniture, and I promise you, you'll be very pleased with the results. So we'll see you on a Zoom call, and hopefully see you next week.